So friends, we now have another special counsel appointed to investigate the crimes of Donald Trump. What does it mean and where do we go from here? Let's talk about it because justice matters. Hey all, Glenn Kirshner here. So Attorney General Merrick Garland just announced the appointment of a special counsel to conduct the criminal investigation and prosecution, if any, of Donald Trump. Garland appointed a prosecutor by the name of Jack Smith. Now there will be plenty of time to talk about who Jack Smith is and what we might expect from him as special counsel. But today, I just want to talk about what it might mean that we now have yet another special counsel investigating the crimes of Donald Trump. Here's today's reporting. From the New York Times, Garland names special counsel in Trump cases. Jack Smith will handle January 6th and Mar-a-Lago inquiries. The appointment of a special counsel is a way for the Justice Department to insulate its inquiries against Donald Trump from political considerations. Attorney General Merrick Garland said he was confident that the move would not slow down the investigations. This statement from Attorney General Garland, based on recent developments, including the former president's announcement that he is a candidate for president in the next election and the sitting president's stated intention to be a candidate as well, I have concluded that it is in the public interest to appoint a special counsel, Garland said at the Justice Department. And this statement from the newly appointed special counsel, Jack Smith. I intend to conduct the assigned investigations and any prosecutions that may result from them independently and in the best traditions of the Department of Justice, Mr. Smith said in a statement. He vowed that the investigations would move forward expeditiously to whatever outcome the facts and the law dictate. Okay, friends, let's tackle some of this. Attorney General Merrick Garland said, this will not slow down the investigation. Can the investigation go any slower? If it did, it would be moving in reverse, right? You can't go any slower than zero. And zero is precisely the number of ruling class criminals who have been held accountable for trying to overthrow our democracy nearly two years ago. No accountability. None for Trump or for Mark Meadows or for John Eastman or Jeffrey Clark or Rudy Giuliani or Sidney Powell or Mike Flynn or Roger Stone or Steve Bannon or any of the other ruling class criminals who participated in the attempted overthrow of our democracy. This will not slow down the investigation. Friends, this can only speed up the investigation. The investigation cannot possibly move any slower. Attorney General Garland also said this will help preserve and promote the integrity of the investigation. It will insulate it from political considerations. Okay, let's talk about that. You want any consequential criminal investigation, particularly of a former president, to be insulated from political considerations, right? You don't want politics to factor in to whether to criminally charge or not criminally charge a high government official. And when Merrick Garland says, look, there was at least the potential for conflict, an appearance of conflict, why? So the fact of the matter is Merrick Garland works for Joe Biden. Joe Biden is his boss. And the attorney general is sort of duty bound to promote and act in accordance with the priorities and the mission of 
the president. Yes, the attorney general should make prosecutorial decisions completely independent of the president and the White House. But let's face it, Joe Biden can fire Merrick Garland at any moment. So when Merrick Garland says, look, I work for Joe Biden. Joe Biden has announced he's going to run for president again in 2024. Not so sure he is, but he's announced it. And now Donald Trump has announced he wants to be Joe Biden's opponent in the 2024 election. So if I, as Joe Biden's attorney general, am now perceived as going after, criminally investigating, and perhaps indicting and prosecuting Joe Biden's political opponent in an upcoming presidential election, that at least gives the, the perception of some kind of conflict, right? Some kind of bias, some kind of impropriety. And I actually think that's a legitimate observation and concern. Why? Think about Clarence Thomas, Supreme Court Justice. Who doesn't care about the actual conflict he has? And he decides to sit and preside over a case in which his wife has an interest. Look at how that has damaged the integrity of the Supreme Court, the credibility, the legitimacy of the Supreme Court in the eyes of the American people and frankly, the world. Merrick Garland wants to avoid that. And I actually believe that's a legitimate concern and that is a factor weighing in favor of the appointment of a special counsel. And you know, friends, one more thing on this conflict issue. There are certainly some people who will say, Appointing a special counsel is not going to convince a single Trump supporter that now it will be a full, fair, independent investigation. No, it's not likely to persuade any of the Trump supporters. But we don't make these decisions based on how Donald Trump's supporters will or will not react, what they will or will not believe about what DOJ is doing, we make these decisions to try to avoid even the appearance of conflict to enhance the legitimacy and the credibility of the investigation and of the Department of Justice. So on the conflict front, this was arguably a good decision. Let me talk about another encouraging data point because goodness knows we need some encouragement right about now. If Merrick Garland had decided that Donald Trump should not be charged, should not be indicted, should not be prosecuted, Merrick Garland could very easily have just announced that and there would be no conflict. But he didn't do that. Instead, he said, an investigation and prosecution of Donald Trump could present the appearance of conflict. So he appointed a special counsel. That is at least one data point that moves us in the direction of a Donald Trump indictment. It doesn't guarantee it, but what would have been far worse is if Merrick Garland had decided Donald Trump shouldn't be charged, shouldn't be prosecuted, because then there would be no need for a special counsel. Friends, I think I'm going to end it there because I'm going to be honest with you. I've got justice fatigue. I've got a fierce case of justice fatigue. It really is demoralizing that Donald Trump tried to overthrow our democracy nearly two years ago now. And the rule of law did nothing to hold him accountable. In fact, we waited so long that we gave him the opportunity to announce another run for president so he can try to acquire the very power he needs to try to kill our democracy all over again. That is a significant failure of the rule of law and the people who are duty bound to administer it, to apply the laws fully and faithfully. 
So yes, I've got a bad case right about now of justice fatigue. But you know what? We may be down, but we're not out. We just had midterm elections that prove that the vast majority of the American people still care about our democracy, still care about the quality of our elected officials. That was a good sign. So we may be down, but we're not out. Yes, we're getting knocked down over and over again, but we keep getting up, we keep pulling on the gloves, we keep punching for accountability, for decency, for honor and ethics in government, for our democracy,